Another podcast <laughs> with me and Niall and Gage together again. Together again. Normally for these cold opens, we take out the guests, but Jeff said, you know, Gage. I don't wanna... need any introduction. It's me. Let's just do this. <laughs> Gage, did you read the comments on the most recent, uh, on the Sleepy Cabin subreddit about yes, uh, the recent I did. podcast? You did? I did. Did it make you sad? A little bit. Damn, now getting real. All right. No, dude, I want to refute them. That's why I brought it up. Oh, all right, all right. Let's get real. I'm here to defend Gage from these. Okay, so this is an excerpt from a post on our subreddit about the episode that me and Jeff were on previously. You got it. All so right. it says, seen a lot of Sleepy Cabin members on this podcast. Nail even co-hosts some episodes. <laughs> Worth a listen. Comments here saying, uh, I tried listening to the one with Jeff on, but I can't stand the lol adulting is so hard, guys, humor. I don't really know what he means by that, but uh, I don't think he should watch or listen to a podcast called Almost Adults if... Uh, well, not, Gage did say two minutes ago, he's like, watch your mouth, young man, or something to me. So is that adulting? I don't know. Honestly, I hate the term adulting for the podcast that we're doing. Just, yeah. I've never been a fan of that Look, term. Fuck that guy. <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> Thank you, You're guys. all right. You're all right. Who cares? I thought you were referring to another post. Oh, no. <laughs> wait, no. Oh, no. <laughs> By the way, wait, last thing I want to say about that is you're coming. This is Gage's podcast. You're, you're coming on his turf here. That's true. That's okay. That's okay. If it makes you feel any better, Gage, you know, people attack Niall. People attacked me. You know, we, we were, neither one of us were safe. Oh, I'm not beaten yeah, up about it at all, man. I'm charmed that I'm getting any criticism at all. People show up in the comments, just type, I hate Jeff. And I'm just sitting there and like, man, that just makes me feel a little sad. He guy hates me. I don't know. I just didn't make him L I didn't make him lol, so I am just hated uh, now. So I... hey, it just hey, it comes with the territory, I guess. I get shit like hang yourself <laughs> like daily. Like, like hang yourself. daily. Uh I like Nile! <laughs> so Jeff, we wanted to tell you about a little adventure that we went on. Yes, I heard. I don't know anything about it. You told me. What adventure? Well, I think, believe last time we were talking about, I was encouraging you two to go to a strip club together. Yeah. I'm just going to live vicariously through you two. And but you know, but no, no, no. Listen, Jeff. Yep. We did go to a strip club and we did plan on going to a strip club, but it turned out we went to one together naturally. Kinda. Yeah, it was on a whim. Oh, things just organically came together. It just happened. As with so many things in life, it just happened. <laughs> yeah. It just happened. But uh, this wasn't just any strip club. We'll get into that. Gage. Okay. All right, yeah, keep we, going. we gotta do the preamble first. We gotta work towards it. Cause... Yeah. You're at the wheel, Gage. Let's so, do yeah, it. I was working, and I was like, hey, there's this event at the comedy store. You and I should go to it. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, it's right up the street from uh, my work. I said it a lot less gay and a lot cooler <laughs> okay, than that. Okay, now, every time I, mean, I bring I mean, up I something, you're lot. like, Gage, that sounds pretty a nice lot. and gay and jolly. Uh, I am not like that at all. I am a jaded beast. But, Niall, you are a kind soul, fucker. Let's hear it. Let's hear how you said it, Niall. Let's just hear a recreation, a redramatization. I said, look, man, I was going to take all my other friends, but uh, they all were busy. And uh, you're the only one of my friends who I doubt would be busy, so... Uh, can't go alone, what the you know. Fuck, Niall. I turned down working late that night. No, I said I need someone to make me look good, and I think you're the right man for that. You just sound like one of those dudes from 1950 with a leather jacket and the slick, the oiled slick back <laughs> hair. You're like, listen, I need someone at my side here so I don't look pathetic. Let's do this. I'm just kidding. I, no, I said it nicely. Okay. I was just like, hey man, I got, I got you this ticket here because. Who did uh, you want to see? There's a podcast called Kill Tony. Yeah, shout okay. out to Kill Tony. Like, I noticed I've been to L.A. for like almost a year and I didn't even go to like one event or like anything like that mm -hmm. it's like fuck it let's go it was okay. interesting because the stand-up that they did they had the audience do the stand-up they had them do a 60 second stand-up bit and then they had a conversation with them after mm -hmm. so everyone sucked at stand-up it was so bad it was unfunny you kind of go there for the roasts that the actual comedians on the panel say after mm -hmm. what was your favorite one Niall? i think my favorite one was the first one where they're like the chick the, the psycho yeah, chick where she's like you know what i hate about america you guys have sales tax when i want to buy something i want it to be final 
That was her actual joke. And she only had one joke. <laughs> and everyone's like, okay, what is this leading up to? And then she's and she... like, my boyfriend killed himself. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. So, yeah, there was, it, was just, it was just crazy fucking people like that. A lot of people went on stage. They did look just like you, Gage. <laughs> What does that mean? I don't know, just like, you know. A lot of nerdy white guys with glasses. Welcome to LA, Niall. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say nerdy. Did, was anyone funny? Uh there was I think they had like a like a stand-up comedian in the wings that they're like, Alright, we're gonna bring out the professional guy now. And that guy was pretty good. The headliner? Or was there a headliner or was it just like a bunch of random uh, Tony Hinchcliffe is usually a headliner. He's on the panel. Okay. Did he do any actual stand up though? No, he's just comment he no, he didn't. <laughs> it, it was kind of actually, if I was listening to that episode, it was probably a bad episode, like, overall, but it was good to go there. Yeah, it was a great experience. And then uh, afterwards, we got some beers. Well, no, we saw a strip club in the distance, and we said maybe. No, it was, like, right next to us, dude. It was right across the road. Uh, I was setting up the scene, man. Okay. I was like, in the distance, we saw it, and we said maybe. Just maybe. I mean, you don't you don't need to romanticize yeah, a, no. a strip club <laughs> 10 feet away, <laughs> but fine. keep going. We it's had, all right. We hey. had a beer, and we went to a strip club. Happy. There we go. There we, we had go. a beer. Yes. We went into that strip club. You got wasted and horny, and you're like, look at that place. Well, I didn't need to get horny, if you know what I'm saying. No, man, because we were like, okay, we kind of have to do this because the podcast, but like, we we're kind of excusing ourselves. But like, it was strictly for business. <laughs> It was strictly for business purposes. Not to get horny, just for business. Of course. I mean, you would, didn't want to disappoint me on the next episode, so... Yeah, we put it on you, the you business You took account. one for the team, and you went into the strip club. I understand. Look, my wife was not happy about it, but you know Dude, what? I did Gage. it for the podcast. Gage. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, so there might be an angle to this uh, strip club thing that I, I'm coming from. Uh-huh. I didn't necessarily... Go you know, on, Niall. I'm interested to hear what you have to say. But... Don't worry, it's me too. But so we went into the strip club. It uh -huh. was empty. It was like completely. There was nobody there except for this like six foot seven yoked. Like he was bigger than the Rock, like Black Bouncer. So I was like, uh, let's not fuck around in here too much. So we go in there. It wasn't like any strip club I've ever seen before. No, I've only seen one. <laughs> I've only seen one strip club before, and that was in uh, Philly. But these girls, these girls in this strip club were actually like spreading their asses on stage and shit. Yeah, it was great. Was it a um, bottomless? It was topless and bottomless? Or topless yeah, and dude. bottomless, yeah. Well, hardcore. Right? So you see that on stage, you know, there's some girl dancing around. I was like, whoa, she's fully naked. That's her vagina right there. We walked in instantly. Some kind of chick who looked like she would have been really hot 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> really hot maybe 20 years ago. Yeah. Came over to us like instantly. But she didn't look like she worked there. She wasn't wearing like stripper clothes. She was wearing like a jacket and she had a purse and shit. Didn't she, Gage? I think so. She was like, hey, if you guys want to know how things work around here, just talk to me. She was very like professional about it. Maybe she was there for so long she got demoted to like manager. <laughs> Tour <something>. man. <laughs> she's, she's just a manager now or something. When she said that, Gage was like, okay, take me on a tour. And then, oh no. I'm just kidding. No, I said, yes, ma'am, take me on the tour. That's how I remember and she it. She rolled her eyes and and I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> That's what I said. I'm here for business. Yeah, and then uh, much to Gage's uh, credit, she asked him for uh, if he wanted a lap dance, and he fucking shut the bitch down. He said no. <laughs> you said no, <laughs> ma'am. I'm married, so. No, no, that's what I thought. I was like, oh, well, you know, it's his first strip club experience. You know, uh, might have been nervous to get the thing. But no, uh, this motherfucker, Gage, he's a pimp. He was waiting for a hotter girl to come over. Yeah, no, you instantly he was jumped barking. on Yeah, that I girl. went, I went, I got that lap dance instantly, that fucking girl. I had no self-control. Okay, so I was waiting for a hotter chick to come by, and this black girl came up to me, and she's like, hey, you wanna dance? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes? Okay, continue. Was that racist, Nile? I don't know. I didn't say that. I said continue. <laughs> it was racist if she was like hey! a 1980s cartoon villain or Wait, something. So, so what did she say? She said, hey, let's dance together. What the fuck is <laughs> going on here? What is happening? I was giving her like a character, like a voice. You're giving her like a, a racist uh, Whoopi Goldberg impression or something? Whoopi Goldberg has like a lower voice. She's like, hello, everybody. Welcome to the view. Ugh! Oh, don't. That's too real. Anyway, continue <laughs> the story. Anyways. Please. Yeah, so Niall hopped on the first piece of ass that he saw, and me, I was uh, I was tactical in my approach. I'm like, right. all right, got to find a hot lady. Get it. And then, yeah, I talked to this girl. She danced topless, and she's like, 
you want a private dance? And I said, yes, please. You were on this park for the last five minutes. I'm sorry, Niall. I like painting a picture. It's a strip club, dude. Yeah. So you went into the uh, the champagne room. I did. Was it a series of lap dances, or uh, were you paying a little extra? A little... Gage will give you his, imp- his interpretation right. of this part, okay. then I'll give you my interpretation of this part. All right. <laughs> Well, he approaches the detective. All right, let's hear Gage's side of the story. I couldn't get in there for the first couple of minutes because the ATMs were shit there. The, the important part was I paid. She stripped all the way down. She started grinding the hell out of me, and she's like, hey, you know, uh, other strippers will do a whole lot more uh, for more money. Wow. And I said, no, thank you. <laughs> Wait, you said no thank you? Wait, what'd you say? I said, uh, that's okay. I just prefer you dancing all naked and such. You guys went to a real classy joint, uh, I gotta tell ya. <laughs> I, I mean, there's not much to it. She danced, she grinded on my body parts, and the bouncer came in, said time's up, and then I walked out, and I met Niall, who's just chilling with this other girl, and he's like, hey, um, this other girl's really nice. Uh, I, I, would like a, I would like to dance with her, if that's okay, Gage. Uh-huh. And I said, no, let's leave. And then we left. But Niall, you had a different part of the story. All right, Gage. <laughs> this is what actually happened. This is what actually happened. The true story. The true... Okay, yes. Let's do it. Okay. So we go in. I get that lap dance from that first chick who comes. She goes away. Gage was too scared to get that lap dance, but he built up the, the courage. And then he got this other chick who was... Actually, she was she was pretty cute. So Gage goes... She was in, hot, yeah. But uh, we didn't know we were going to the strip club. We didn't set out. So I just brought like some cash. Oh, with me. So, you know, I asked Gage for like a 20 for doing it. And I pay him back the next day, which I did. But anyway, so very true. I'm sitting down watching the girls spreading their asses on the stage, you know, doing their dances and being like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, she's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Is that your horny voice? Oh, yes. Some chicks come over to us. One of them kind of grabs Gage and says, come on, you're coming with me. Gage like follows her and is like, yeah, yes, ma'am. Then he goes in. <laughs> How much was that, Gage, by the way? How much did you pay for this uh, special lap dance? How much did you pay for this? It was about uh, $200. I don't know. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. But you yeah. said it was like 300 back in Philadelphia. Yeah, but it was different. You're supposed to be allowed to do stuff to them. You're supposed to be allowed to, you know, <laughs> give them a little touch. Can I, I just interject for a moment. Like, I know I'm sitting here just like nodding and saying yeah a lot, but I haven't really been to a strip club in a few years, and I... I think I went for like a bachelor party and I went with Stamper once and so there's a whole other story. But <laughs> but the only ones we ever went to were pretty like up and up. Like they weren't bottomless. They didn't want you touching the girls or anything like that. Yeah, but man, this was a whorehouse. This is a cover yeah, yeah. for this was a cover for like <laughs> prostitutes. So I don't know I don't know how these strip clubs I don't know how like the really bottom of the barrel ones operate. It wasn't so that gonna... bottom of the barrel. It was like <laughs> it was like two out of five stars. Okay. So her and Gage go into that uh, curtain room. It's basically the two hundred dollar package gets you yeah. a curtain. That's about hey, it. So you can't really uh, attest to that. You were you weren't there, Nile. You weren't in the curtain room. What happened was like from what I gather, she was doing her thing. She told you, you know, other strippers, not me though, would do a lot for uh, this money. Yeah. But you're not getting your money's worth. Gage somehow fell in love with her. Oh, mm-hmm. bull honky, but continue. Followed her on Instagram and. <laughs> I forgot about that. Made sure. The fuck did you and find her on Instagram? Anyway. She followed me first. She followed you first. And then he, he yeah. messaged her and asked her to go out for a cup of coffee because he thinks that she likes him. Oh, That's true. No. The stripper. Oh, no. Who you were paying to pretend to like you. Gage fell in love oh, with this woman. Oh, no. Gage. Okay. Fall Gage. in love is very very over gauge well, gauge gauge she followed me on instagram i followed her back how did she follow you and she elaborate said, on she's this she's like hey i'll follow you on instagram and i'm like cool another instagram follower by the way at gauge agnew if any of you ladies want to follow me <sighs> and so she did and i said hey she said hey and then, You're not really married, are you? Was that a joke? No, no, I'm not married. I'm not married. Okay, just check in. You could be married. You look married, but uh, you, <laughs> you message her. What does that mean? <laughs> I look married. Gage messages this lady. How much money do you give her every week for her kid? Okay, all right. You are just saying blatant lies, good man, but $50. $50 for her kid, and they're going to go on a date soon. But th- this has been a couple weeks now, Gage. Yeah, Three but weeks. I'm going on a date with her. You're not going on a date with wide shoulders. Wait, wait, wait. When did you give her $50? I missed that part. 
It was a joke, good sir. No, he doesn't. He doesn't actually pay her every week, but he gave her two hundred for making fun of him and uh, asked her for coffee. Okay, I think two hundred was a good price. Yes, Jeff. I just need to explain to you how this works, Gage. Even though I'm not the most pro strip club goer, but. They befriend you, Gage, to get the most money possible out of you. You know That's what, Jeff? Job. You come with us next time, and I, I, we'll see how many girls follow you on Instagram. They will work. You, they will put your arm around you and befriend you and talk about with whatever you want to talk about and pretend to sound interested, Gage. <laughs> That's how it works. Yeah, it's kind of like this podcast. People sit back and just pretend yeah, like they're interested yeah, in what go. I'm saying. But Gage. <laughs> You can talk about cleaning toilets, and they will be like, that is so interesting. Yeah, I know how a strip you, you club got, works. I you just got hoodwinked, like, Gage. I'm not even kidding. This is a witch hunt. I Go ahead. No, now. no, no. I, no, dude, I was just as bad. Don't worry. But I, what happened next is my favorite part was because after you came out of there, you went right up to the stage, and you sat down. And then you would throw dollars. Every, it was it was cool to see. I was chatting to some girl. See, she she hypnotized me into thinking that she liked me too. <laughs> They're really yeah, good now, at it. You're like, hey, I think I'll be back next week. No, that's not really what happened. You that's did not say really that. What happened. You said, yeah, Christy, I'll see you next week. And you're like, hey, do you want to go back there sometime and meet up with Christy? They're so good at it. They can make like a guy who goes in there knowing that it's a fantasy. They are so fucking good at it. Like they, that's they their did. job. Yeah, yeah, they're professionals. Uh, yeah, like the, this chick made me think it, and uh, but like you know, at the back of my head, I'm like, okay, I know I'm just at a strip club, but like she was like, I was talking to her for a while, and she was like, nice and cool. So yeah, I, I want to get a lap dance from her, but Gage was already getting that lap dance. That's when I peeked my head in, right in the middle of your lap dance. That was before the private room. You're like, Gage, I want to dance with this girl, and I said, Niall, please leave me alone. So I wanted to support her. So when and then. Uh, <laughs> Because, no, she was cool. And then like, You're well, actually, talking shit about me following people on Instagram and stuff. Meanwhile, you're like, I want to support this girl in all of her endeavors. No, I would get a measly $25 lap dance as opposed to forking out 200 in my life savings in my fucking car and my wife. It was just uh, a little You thing. better not bring up Deborah again, motherfucker. And that's when I said, uh, I'll probably get one next week because I kept telling her I'll get one from her and I just wasn't oh, able okay. to. Then we bounced. So, you know, I mean, like, you know. Wasn't the most interesting story, but you know, it, we did it. Overall, great night. Yeah, I had fun. It was an experience that I don't do quite often. Go to the strip club with my main man, Niall. We had fun. Uh, I threw dollars at a girl. She threw body parts at me. It was a good time. Are you still expecting a message from her to uh, meet up for this for a date? Or no, uh... sir. Did you DM her? I am though? past. Did it. you act? Did I you did. Actually... You yeah, did? I told you the story, and she replied back, and then I replied, and Wait, she didn't, didn't reply you, back. You didn't tell me the story. <laughs> I mean, that's it to the story. I said, hey, and she said, hey, and I said, how's it going? And then nothing. Radio silence. Can you send me a link to her Instagram? Could you send it to me? Yeah, why not? I just want to I just want to see this, this lady, this vixen, this lady of the evening. <laughs> I'm trying to find if she still follows you. Yeah, she doesn't follow you anymore, dude. Oh, she doesn't? You just got baited. Oh, well, she's a master baiter. Haha. <laughs> that, that, that was actually pretty. Uh, that was clever. Clever. <laughs> I can tell by the way you laughed clever so Clever and hard. terrible at the same time. <laughs> Gage, I'm sorry. I shouldn't bully you this much. It's fine. I'm bullying you right back, young it's man. It's good. Yeah, yeah. No, like I like that. We have a good chemistry bullying each other. You like your coffee black, Gage. I see. She just happened to be black. So how, how far was she willing to go with you? Oh, just like third base what's third base below the belt kind of things this was I a horrible see. idea jeff why did you why'd you even suggest this to us you degraded me you're not sorry you're not sorry one goddamn bit he did not look sorry in that fucking club i'll tell you that i know he didn't licking I his didn't. lips you can't prove anything young well actually you can find the picture on our twitter if you want to see me like drooling over outside of the strip club the picture of us yeah the picture of us you picked the worst one uh, the other pictures were like blurry because you were like getting out of the picture oh okay anyways doesn't matter <laughs> we went we saw women we were married yeah all her posts all her instagram posts are just selfies but then she has like the inspirational quotes wait let's see wait where, where can i find it so she posted this and it says my heart breaks when i think about the kids who have birthday parties no one goes to i am so sorry little baby you don't deserve that <laughs> what is that that's her concerns in the world and then uh there's a more normal one when you're a good person you don't lose people people lose you 
Remember that! Exclamation point. That's not bad. Yeah, no, that's not bad. It's just, that was a weird one. That was <laughs> People pray for cake. Then when God gives them batter, eggs, oil, icing, a pan, and an oven, they get frustrated and leave the kitchen. Was that an actual quote or deep stuff? Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's okay, there. Okay, so you, you ever you know you see it? Well, I I just unfollowed her because apparently she didn't follow me anymore. So I mean, uh, I don't know why yeah, you're acting surprised there. That's terrible. I mean, she, I'm, uh, it's not like my heart's broken. She or anything. unfollowed you because like she's following 724 people. <laughs> Did you think that she wanted to she, when you were uh, you know sitting there that she was she just wanted to follow the antics of this guy of Gage? Yes, I thought she... See where this guy goes. See what this guy gets up to. Yeah, she thinks, oh, what a wacky, wonderful, loving person. I hope he succeeds in life, and maybe I'll see where he goes. No, no. That's the exact thought going through her head. No, just fucking, when is this going to be over so I can get my money? How can I suck as much money as possible from this fool uh, using his dick? my uh, ass and titties. Well, you know what? She did her job well, so good on her for being a modern woman making bank. You no longer exist in her brain. This is getting really depressing, Niall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I'm no, sorry. it's it's cool. <laughs> I'm going to follow her on Instagram. I'm going to bring me Instagram friends. I don't even use my Instagram account. I'm just trying to find the people that she follows. But, like, it's mostly, like, there's no real dudes there. So she must do that for a while and then just unfollow the dude just to get the money. Yeah, she did say when she was dancing, she's like, I want a man to treat me well. And you're like, I'll be that man? Yes, I was hypnotized like that movie. Gage, she was going to drain your bank account, Gage. You're going to have to become a sugar daddy. And she would have sent you into ruin, so... Should be thankful. She Dude, don't feel bad you. about that. That's what they do. That's their job. You dodged a bullet, friendo. I guess I did. You have to be sharp, Gage. The, the world is filled with predators. Predators, Gage. Yeah, dude, you just got snagged. Listen to Niall. Niall knows how the game is played. All right, all right. I'll learn from Niall's experiences, and I'll <laughs> grow as a human being. I don't, yeah, oh, I, wouldn't take, I wouldn't take too much advice. Oh, man. Thank you, Jeff, for coming back. <laughs> Thank you, Niall, for convincing me to go to the strip club and lose all my money. Yeah, you're welcome. With that all being said, coming up on Almost Adults. Oh, yes. We took you to your first uh, anime comic convention. Anime conference. Anime conference, as you called it. That's good storytelling. Taking a stereotype that you know and putting it on its head. Yes. Yeah. As long as you keep creating things like and having those life experiences, you can build up to something. My friend Gage is gonna talk, talk to you. Oh, and Cat, oh, Cat, she'll be there, oh, too. Well, they're gonna talk about the things they wanna say. Speak about their lives from day to day. They're gonna dive into the nuts and bones. Welcome, y'all, to Always Adults. It's actually almost adults. All right, Kat, would you like to do the honors of introducing this podcast? I had literally no preparation to do this intro, and I have no idea what to say, and I am nervous. So I will pass and leave that to you this time. <laughs> Gage, you should probably introduce the people that you know. Ugh, fine. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Almost Adults. We got Kat back in the co-host seat. She's doing a fantastic job. Thanks. Hey, guys. And today we are welcoming back Michelle Stanford and introducing Matt McEwen. <laughs> Did I say your name right? Yeah, actually. Okay. How, how, how many ways are there to say it? Just I've, one. I've messed McElwain. up. McEwen. <laughs> McQuan. <laughs> McKean. <laughs> I have messed up so many names on air at the podcast. Like, I, I, I think we're up to three now. My favorite pronunciation of Matt's last name is when they just kind of stare at you helplessly. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Uh, Matt. Matt. Uh, Matt. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, Matt. Just Matt. 
<laughs> I get nervous saying people's names, even if it's like four letters long. I'm like, I'm gonna find a way to mispronounce this, and I'm sorry. <laughs> it's I like when people say Mick Irwin, and there's no R in my name anywhere. But I think <laughs> that they're just kind of guessing. They're like, ah, oh, this isn't a word. <laughs> yeah, people people do that for words. They just see like the first letter and they just make up things on the spot. They're like, Matt. McGowan. <laughs> I get that one. I actually get that McGowan? one. Well, there's a famous actress named Rose McGowan. Um, they're just going for it. So they're just like, eh, you're probably related since you're in Hollywood. Mm. <laughs> this is all <laughs> This is all getting cut. We're just talking this about names. the biggest leap. Yes. I thought that was the theme of today's show. N- names? names? That's like when people say, oh, Michelle Stanford, are you related to the uh, university? And I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm poor. <laughs> I am half building on my mom's side. <laughs> I I get the same thing about um, Vice President Agnew. Mm. Uh, that was Richard Nixon's, our favorite president's <laughs> um, <laughs> vice president. He's like a headless monster in Futurama. Yeah, yeah. and he's, yeah. he's probably better known as the Headless corpse of Spiro Agnew and from Futurama. <laughs> better known. That's better known. That's where our culture is at right now. Right. That's literally the only way I know him. <laughs> <laughs> Check on Agnew. <laughs> um, so yeah, Michelle does Centralia uh, 2050, which is an online web comic and a print comic and a print comic. Now you can buy it. Can are people able to buy print copies? Yeah, you can buy it through the website. Yeah, centralia2050.com. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. That's, Very that's easy all to the find. plugs you get. Yeah, that's all the plugs you get. Ah, oh, all right. We have an Etsy maybe, shop maybe some at the end. And... <laughs> if you're good. <laughs> and uh, Matt does the art for this podcast. I do. So if you've been enjoying the art uh, from this podcast, that's uh, that's all Matt's fault. That's Matt's fault that you're enjoying it. <laughs> and if you don't enjoy it, please send all complaints uh, directly to Gage. And if you're on the podcast, just look forward to me drawing you. <laughs> I was previously drawn, and I was blue, and I really enjoyed it. Oh, great! I'll do it. I'll do you as blue again. Yeah, like it's, a, it's a good color. Like double blue. Sweet. And yeah, it seems like a lot of people uh, like the art direction that's going. So congratulations, Matt. Great. I wasn't sure when I was starting it, but it. I think it has like a nice theme to it. It feels very unique. Well, thank so you. So it stands out for the show. Maybe like makes it pop. When I look through my uh, my podcast list of like icons, I'm like, oh, like, I see it immediately. I know what it is. Uh, I'm happy that one worked out. Yeah, Matt was able to draw the new logo too. Oh um, yeah. Which I thought turned out really well. I got the the, the seesaw logo, right? You got the seesaw. People think that uh, that white area uh, next to the kids' crotch is his wiener. Uh, I'll 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 say on the record it is not it is his hand busting oh, yeah. that myth yeah wide open whoops <laughs> I, I can change that I can make it look more uh, more or less like I, got, I gotta look this up now I gotta see what you guys are talking yeah, about I, I don't immediately remember either but now, now every time I look I'm sure that's what I'm gonna see uh, but it's like a small icon when you see it on iTunes right so. oh yeah that's probably right. why <laughs> yeah I mean like you know sometimes kids uh, just play with their wieners that's what they do because yeah, they're, they're dumb. Okay, so to be fair, I that is not what I saw when I first looked at Thank this you. beautiful I'm art. Glad. I did not think of a child exposing himself on a seesaw gauge. Yeah, what the fuck, people? What? Okay. That's really yeah. big. No, this is what people have told me. I didn't come oh, out and say it. Oh, that does not look if like I a wiener. If I had noticed it, I would have said something. It is 100% a hand. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the grown man has his hand in the same position. So it's like... Can tell. So it sounds like you just had some really immature fans. <laughs> it sounds like your friends are wow. almost adults. Dude, in the cold open, we <laughs> I was shitting on people <laughs> listening to this too. Uh, they don't want to be reprimanded on my own podcast. I'm very delighted to anyone who listens to our ramblings. Thank you so much for listening. But also... Thank you very much. Also, the kid's not showing off his dick in the icon. <laughs> <laughs> but also, there's no dick drawings in our thing. All right. <laughs> this is this immature rambling have gone on long enough. Let's get down to brass. Have they though? No, there's probably going to be a lot more, um, you know, LOLing. Okay, I just I just want people to know what the show is the, about. The show's about LOLs. Gotta stay on brand. Yeah, it's not like our show has a topic or anything. 
Except this time it does. Except it does this time. Ooh. Because, yeah, we have several juicy topics today that I prepared just for uh, Michelle and Matt and Kat. You can't remember my name. That's why he always pauses before he says my name. <laughs> I do that to everyone. Except it me. It takes me a second to register as people's names and go, uh, Jem? It's not Jem. And I, I wait for a second to m- make sure they confirm it. Uh, it happens. <laughs> By the way, we had mimosas beforehand, so if we slur a little bit, <laughs> it's beca- this is the closest you're getting to a drunk podcast. I was no, not invited I'm to the fine. mimosa party. I had a smoothie with spinach in it. Did not get inebriated from that at all. Some little kind of like champagne, though. All right, we get it. You're super healthy. You're super sober. And we're super L.A., and we're super LA. We get I'm so it. jealous. <laughs> Kat, I, I keep inviting you up here. You refuse to come up here. <laughs> I don't <laughs> refuse. You refuse and you spit right in my face when I say, Kat, it would be nice if you joined us here in LA. And then you spit right in my eye. All the way from St. Louis. Ah. Mm. Yeah, and she's in St. Louis. That far. That's not too far. I mean, I think it's It's not too far. I could, I could journey out west. One of these. Like Bible. Oh, yeah, like Fievel. Like Remember Fievel. Fievel. Is it Fievel? <laughs> no, Fievel. Fievel? I thought yes. it was Fievel. Uh, <laughs> it's Fievel. We, it sounds like we're all saying the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we absolutely we're are. We're all saying Fievel. <laughs> anyways, anyways, damn it. Kat, oh, you're going to a convention soon. Is that correct? That is correct. I am going to New York Comic Con, and I am so excited. Is this your first con? No, I've been to several. I've been to a few in Florida as a guest. I mean, like, a patron. Really? Like, I was invited. Yeah, and then last year I've been to a couple um, to be on panels and do interviews and stuff. So, so yeah. That's awesome. Wait, you're on panels? That's great. I was on a couple, yeah. They were... They were small, but they were fun. What were your panels about? They were a lot about um, representation in comics, and we did one that was like more personal about like how comics saved our lives. It was a little, uh, it was fun. It was like a small crowd, and it was like really personal. We also did one where we had Chris Claremont on as a guest. If you guys are familiar with Chris Claremont. I don't know names. <laughs> <laughs> he is. It's um, okay. I'm not familiar either. He was one of the original, um, one of the most like prolific X-Men writers. Like he's responsible for a lot of really famous stories like Dark Phoenix Saga. So uh, I got Ooh. to sit right next to him. It was very intimidating. <laughs> Did you ask him any questions about Dark Phoenix? Like, hey, why didn't you name it Dank Phoenix? Uh, no, strangely, that didn't come up. I'll ask him next time, though. <laughs> but no, did you ask him any questions like that's been on your mind about the series or something? Oh, gosh, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Was it all a blur? It's all a blur. I don't remember anything past like six months ago. I'm just you, you just you just got to keep moving forward. Leave the past behind you, Gage. I actually that's interesting that you say that because I have like a really selective memory about some sort of stuff. Yeah. Like, like people are like, remember when you said my celebrity crush was Don Sheedle, and I'm like, that sounds something I would do. <laughs> yeah. Probably I automatically, something I would say. Yeah, I automatically believe people when they're like. Gage, I have the craziest story about you. And I'm like, all right, sure. <laughs> I've had a couple of those in the past month. I've heard some crazy stories about Gage you didn't remember. What stories have you heard about me, Matt? <sighs> about how you played uh, beer pong and had like four people gang up on you and make you drink like tw- 26 things at beer pong. And then you fell asleep in a dog bed. Yeah, that sounds like me. And, and then the time you rolled that down you, like, a hill. Yeah, and almost got like, hit by a that car. Was a separate instance. Yeah, it's separate instance. Those I like to imagine they were movie. all the same night. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that would be a Seth, I would a Seth be Rogen dead. movie. Yeah, a Seth Rogen movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gabe, speaking of uh, conventions, I'm going to interview you now. Sure. Oh, yeah. We took you to your first uh, anime comic convention. Anime about, conference. Anime conference, as you called it, about a week ago. What, what did you think? What's your impression? Yes, there was a bunch of weeaboos there, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was nice. I saw your picture on Twitter of you guys in cosplay, right? Yes. yes it was, was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Those were amazing. Amazing oh, thank choices. You. Yeah, Kat is a fan of My Hero Academia. I, I think you're actually the one who got me into My Hero Academia. Really? Maybe. <laughs> you sound so <laughs> wistful when you say that. Maybe? I'm just so, 
I'm so honored. <laughs> well, like, it's no JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but it's pretty good. JoJo's pretty good. Gage very, two Gage very Gage. different shows. But yes, we took uh, Gage to his first anime conference. It was a very, very small convention, but uh, I dressed up as Suyu and Matt was best genus. And uh, I felt kind of bad because a lot of times it was just us getting stopped and people asking Gage to take like their photo <laughs> with us. I was like, I'm sorry, Gage. I didn't invite you to be like our handler, like right. Yeah, I, I was like offering to hold the coffee that I I got them coffee, and I'm like, do you want me to hold that coffee for you? Uh, <laughs> I was like, no, I'll hold my own coffee, and then our I dropped secretary. it. And then and then Gage bought me a coffee, which I dropped Aww. on the ground. <laughs> oh no, because that's how she appreciates things that Gage gives her. It was a boo boo. Yeah, she threw it on the ground. And Gage, if you could have cosplayed as everyone, anyone, who would you have been? Oh, we actually talked about this. I would have been a uh, present Mike. Yeah. Uh, nice the teacher <laughs> right the teacher with the microphone because i Excellent normally have choice. a microphone in front of my face yeah those yeah, have been like the best happen. three characters to see walking around the convention <laughs> yeah and I, I told gage if we made it if he wanted to do it i would make the microphone working where like he can amplify <laughs> oh my God. So louder when he talks. that would be oh so God. amazing and so annoying <laughs> i know <laughs> and i could yell at purple pervert all day Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Purple no, but it seems like no one likes Purple Pervert, but they keep inserting him into the there's show. Okay, for those who don't watch the show, show, there's this small guy. Mineta. Mineta. Yes, sure, him. And he, um, Great brush. He, he, like, drools over girls and sexualizes them in a very weird way, and it makes everyone uncomfortable for a solid minute. Mm hmm. And that's in all the show. he does. That yeah, that's his character trait. Why is, just, is like, he even? Girls. How did he get into this like top class when he's just a shitty, gross kid? I just kind of yeah. wish he was voiced by Gilbert Gottfried. That's yeah. all I wish. <laughs> I, I mean, if he was, if he was like a gross actor, like Steve Buscemi. Yeah. By the way, Steve Buscemi, God bless his soul. He does right, look so, a little gross. So we have some ways <laughs> to improve the character of Mineta. Either be Steve Buscemi or be voiced by Gilbert Gottfried. Those are the only ways <laughs> that we could appreciate this character. I want to see some boobies. <laughs> oh my god. I want to see some boobies, see? Or Danny DeVito. That's more Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah. And Danny DeVito is small, so... And, yeah. and the character's also... In oh, the man, live okay, action so, Boku no Hero. Yeah, yeah. When, when Netflix does a live action adaptation, we know who they're going to cast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's already happening. <laughs> it's decided. I would yeah. die. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and it, his superpower is super lame too because he just has hair Ugh. that are sticky balls. Yes. Yeah, and there are characters from Class B who are way like better. Like Shinso. Yeah. Class B is like the class <laughs> below them. I think he's there because like you would expect in one of these animes that like the characters would be really perverted. So he's just kind of like a way to like take all the perversion from all the characters and put them into one oh. person. That you can hate. So you oh, can he's hate the token one. pervert. He's just the token pervert. So like none of the other characters have to be point. super perverted. And that way you can just take out all your frustration on one person instead of being like, oh, I really like so-and-so, but oh, they're a little perverted sometimes. It's like, no, you just have like the one character that you hate for that reason. That's brilliant. And that way they're, yeah. That's the way I see it. And anyway. then they can kill him off and everyone will feel great. But then who's going to be the resident pervert to take your frustration? There will be no pervert. Be, we don't need no be perverts. Dinky at that point. Kaminari. <laughs> oh, you guys already have a runner up pervert in mind. Well, it's like his friend. Yeah, the the, the li lightning guy. Dink, dink, oh, yeah. Right? yeah. He, he's like Mineta's friend for no reason. Because <laughs> he doesn't have to be as gross as Mineta, but he is because he associates with him. Just anyway, like real life. We're, we're talking about a show that like, a lot of people who probably haven't even seen. Mm. So, yeah, conventions. We're just, yeah. Well, speaking of perverts. Um... <laughs> conventions. <laughs> Full conventions. of them. Full of them. Full of them. It, like, um, yeah. Hmm. I don't want to go down this avenue of like, perverts. <laughs> speaking uh, of perverts, a bunch, something a bunch else. Of very, not perverts. Not perverts. But there's a lot of socially inept people there. It does seem like some people's first foray out of their house. Yeah, and like, because um, someone was, I remember one person in particular was yelling um, Michelle's character's name. Yes, this happens often. Sue, Sue, yeah. Froggy, Sue, Froggy. Sue. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> she has a name. She's Michelle. Well, they can't <laughs> know that my name is Michelle. <laughs> 
Well, they could just say, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. I, I oftentimes, uh, I, I am guilty of missing a lot of people who like want my photo maybe because uh, they'll, they'll say like, see you, like really <laughs> softly. And I'm not like listening out for it. <laughs> Uh, that that con was interesting. Um, definitely seemed like a lot of people's first convention. Have we even named the convention yet? Yeah, uh, I don't think we have. Yeah. It was yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, it's it was Nerdbot Nerd Con. Con. Uh, you owe me a soda. Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> Nerdbot Con in Jinx, Pasadena. You just said you owe me a soda. She was really quiet. Yes. We'll edit it in in post. Anyway, let's get a clean take of that. It was Nerdbot Con in uh, Pasadena. Jinx, you owe me a soda. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I think the most interesting thing about that was so many people who wanted to take my picture um, asked for it in a very, like, drawn out, painstaking way. Like, oh, Sue, um, would it be okay if together I got a uh, picture with you with my phone? Would that be all right? I'm like, at, to, after a point, I was just like, you want a picture, right? Yes. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> like... That's nice that they're considerate enough to ask instead of just like. But it took a long you. time. Yeah. yeah, but it took forever to ask, and I'm like, I know. <laughs> I, I find the most anime kids and kids that go to these conventions, they're not necessarily rude. They just don't know how to interact with people. Yeah. And yeah. and they're not typically too gross. I mean, sometimes they Usually are. Usually not. No. But. <laughs> You just kind of get the talking benefit. about these people like they're the filth of the earth. No. Typically, they're not too but gross. Like, okay. Well, by my experience. The people there are kind of awkward, but it's not because they're bad people or anything. It's just they they have a hard time getting to like socialize with people, and that's fine. I've been there too. I I feel it was like that in high school. Yes. Right. So like I was trying to give them the benefit of like not being like oh weirdo keep away from me. Just like all right, dude, do you want pictures? I was a hundred percent like that. I was like weirdos get away. <laughs> yeah. So There's... for the record, um, if I come to an event dressed as a big green frog. It's safe to assume you can take my picture. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be like, oh, just leave me alone. I'm not looking for attention. <laughs> That's me to all these cons, though. I, I just went in a sweatshirt and no one pulled me over. Actually, some guy offered. Uh, I was joke. I jokingly said, I'm like, oh, I get it. You want these guys in the picture. Oh, right. And he's like, you can come into the picture, too. As I was saying, like, you can't joke with people like that who are still trying to like find out if like it's okay to even take pictures <laughs> right i know uh but anyways we had a fun time uh other than the female rick shoving a camera in my face being like take the picture yeah well, what do you expect <laughs> what, yeah what, what do you expect uh my con experience were, was slightly different because I, I never dress up for these cons and um i went to one in florida cat have you been to megacon I have been to MegaCon. I've been a couple times. I've been to the one in Orlando yeah. and Tampa. I, I went to there, and all the celebrities were, like, super nice. Like, uh, honestly, like, it was a while ago, so maybe he's not like this anymore, but Dan Harmon uh, was, like, super nice when I asked him for writing advice. Uh, I heard, haven't heard great things about him since, but <laughs> he was nice at the time. <laughs> And um, I actually got to talk to the actor that played Big Bird uh, from Sesame Street. He was super cool. He was like, oh, yeah, we should get a picture together. And his wife was like, let's get a picture. And she was super sweet. And did, super did... old timey British. It was yeah. weird. Yeah. Like, did, he that... wear the, did he wear the costume? No, he didn't wear the costume. Did you Photoshop him as the real Big Bird? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. And also, that actor, uh, Carol Spinney, he's been playing Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch for, like, almost 50 years. So, and he's, like, still doing the voices. Hmm. So I, I found that really uh, interesting. That's impressive. Yeah, that's impressive. That's to good be a job security. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, after 50 years, I'm out. And I'm like, all right. Th that's half fair. Half a century. That's a, that's a fair run. That's a long <laughs> time to be a big yellow bird. Long time to be a big bird. <laughs> And, or a trash um, man. Or a trash man. <laughs> Some people are a trash man for longer. Am I kidding? Right, yeah, mm, yes. <laughs> and the other convention I went to was like this horror convention. Um, it, it was actually the week before uh, the convention I went, the Nerdbot convention. I went mm. with you guys. And it, it was like very, a lot of culty. I, I say culty, but like from cult films, people mm -hmm. from cult films. Have you seen that clip on YouTube where the guy goes, Garbage Day? Yeah. Yeah. He was there. <laughs> and 
my friend wanted a picture with him. Shout out to Dave. <laughs> and he was like super jacked. And there's just one point in the movie where he takes an umbrella and stabs a guy and then opens the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Dave had him sign an umbrella. Oh my God. That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there was a bunch of weirdos at that convention too, but <laughs> I'm sorry. This is, this is me just shitting on conventions. Oh, I love I guess weirdos. Conventions... Hey, weirdos is not mean to me. It's just uh, no. I am extremely person. weird. Yeah. <laughs> the, I the love conventions. Is... Yeah. No, it's, they're great. Yeah, it's a fantastic way for people to kind of step out of their comfort zone and get together and share in, um, in a culture that they love so much. Mm-hmm. And you get to meet Thank so you, many Kat. cool people. I've met so Bringing many it cool back people. Around. Yeah. Tell tell us about some people. You don't have to name them, but what what sort of people have you met? At, oh my um, gosh, I've met. Oh my gosh, I've had like the coolest experiences. Well, the last one I went to, I met Billy West. Oh nice, oh, nice. voice actor Whoa. extraordinaire. He was so cool, but like everybody was in his line for autographs, and then I got up mm. to him and I was like, I don't have anything for you to sign. I just wanted to say hi, and then he <laughs> almost threw like a balled up napkin at me. Um, but then he did Whoa. some voices for me, and it was very cool. He did um. Wait, why Zap did he throw a bald up? Up? No. Why did he throw a bald up napkin at you? I want to go back <laughs> he, to that. He did. He did not. He like mimed that he was going to because I came up and I was like, I have nothing for you to sign. I just want to say hi. And then he like, oh, he just gestured he was at straight me. goofing. He's like, yeah. I want to write my name on something. Oh. <laughs> did you say so cool. I loved you? Did you say I loved you as the red M M&M? and <laughs> M? <laughs> I mean. Let's be real. All of his voices are amazing, so it would have. Did you not been know he played the red M and M? I did. Everybody did. know. I, I knew that. that. It sounds just like Fry, and yeah. the and the bee from Honey Nut Cheerios. Oh, oh I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. that was his. He is. I didn't he know is he the, was bee. the bee. I he learned is the today. bee. I think the I bee's Jerry name is Seinfeld Buzz. Was the bee. Jerry Seinfeld is now he's every bee, but um, before the bee movie, he was no bees. <laughs> now he was. Now he is every bee. Bees? Bees. Bees. Any bee in any commercial, that's Jerry Seinfeld. That's Jerry Seinfeld. (laughs) (laughs) Or Billy West, apparently. No, he took Billy West's whole scene when it comes to bees. Billy West can't be bees anymore. But on the topic of conventions, um, they're also a really really great way for networking, um, Mm. especially if, like, you're new to the scene or not, like, at the tier of people like working for Marvel and DC and stuff. Um, so I think that's very cool. And I'm excited because I'm going to do a little bit of networking when I go to New York Comic Con. Um, and Michelle, do you ever table with Centralia? Yeah, I've tabled a couple times. That's so um, cool. We're actually, yeah, and we're tabling at a Geek Girl Con in Seattle um, in October. That's so. another plug. Oh my god, I got to get this out by October. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it'll be really weird um but yeah we've tabled uh, i did WonderCon back in i think was it march, march yeah. yeah down in um anaheim that was a lot of fun uh yeah i'm trying to get into more uh comic conventions to show centralia at because yeah really well at WonderCon. yeah by the way i i i liked centralia when i first read it now I really like Centralia. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It um, and it's the comic it really community. picks up chapter three, which I, I was talking to you about this a little bit earlier. Mm. It was kind of slow building at first, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's web comic, so it takes a while, right. and you're also just one person. <laughs> I um, am one person. But like, <laughs> but by the time chapter three rolls around, you're like, oh. Okay, she knew what she was doing all along. Surprise! I had a plan. Surprise! I'm competent. <laughs> That's the biggest twist. There actually of all. is a script. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There is. What were you saying, Kat? I was saying comics are such a cool medium, and especially web comics. Like they're so different from print comics. Um, mm. Just because of like the way you can pace it out, like Gage was saying, like you can do that slow build with web comics because you're releasing like one page at a time, whereas like a print comic. Like, the whole issue is coming out. Right. It has its ups and downs because, I mean, I design uh, Centralia ultimately to be a printed book. Um, like, I just released Volume 1 this year. And sometimes it's a downside because an arc that is maybe a little bit more quiet, like, in the book, can feel really slow, like, in webcomic form. Because mm-hmm. I release, like, a page a week. 
But then it's like, well, if I tried to make it go really fast for the webcomic, it would be really oddly paced in the book. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes I just have to tell the readers, like, mm, I know it feels slow right now, but just hang in there. Right, like, just wait for it. <laughs> I usually just uh, w wait for the books to come out, quite yeah, honestly. Yeah, I'm because... fine with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still supporting you, just in book form. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And there's something to be yeah. said about, like, when you're making comics, if it's you know a, a, a book is something that you, you flip from one page to the other so there's mm. certain pacing things that happen there and like there's a big impact on like turning the page and everything but when you're a webcomic you're just kind of scrolling through yes like, there's certain there's certain things that don't come through that way so you kind of really have to decide is this ultimately going to be a webcomic or a print comic mm. and that can really affect how like even you plan out your panels and stuff like that that's what i think you do really effectively oh, Michelle, because even when i'm just reading it in book form just like the oh my gosh is on the last <laughs> panel and you're like I gotta flip to the next page I can't yeah. wait to it's find out what she's turns. almost gushing about yeah. <laughs> page turns are so important I, I plan those out too as I'm, I'm working on stuff mm -hmm. yeah yeah Matt you want to talk a little bit about um, just the foundation and the story you're working on yeah sure uh, so I've like had this story in mind since I was in high school of course you know a lot of these ideas they start really early on before you even really get going on them but I didn't really apply myself to start actually doing it till maybe a little over a year ago. Mm. And uh, I have my first chapter written out. I've already done the thumbnails and a lot of the sketches for the first chapter, just kind of like getting into the final stages of it. I plan for it to be out by the end of the year, but it's going to be pushed back a little bit. And uh, what, should I, what should I talk about? Like, uh, What's the story the, about? The yeah. story itself. Yeah, what's it about? So it's yeah, give uh, us a little tease. Give us a little. Yeah, I'm not. Little, I'm, not little. As, I'm not as good at pitching it because it's not out yet. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's as as we're like Michelle's is is more of a story that's uh, like futuristic and cyberpunk. Mine's more like a fantasy adventure type story. It's about like a world of humans and spirits that has become separated from one another, and there's one child who's born who can still see the spirits and communicate with them. And he kind of goes on this adventure to find out like why they got separated in the first place and ultimately try to reconnect them. Uh, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah. That's Thanks. interesting. So, yeah. I, I don't see a lot of ghosts and fantasies mm -hmm. together a lot. And it's called? It's called Ruin. Just Ruin. ruin. Yeah. Because it will ruin... Your heart. Your perspective on <laughs> ghosts. <laughs> Put that well, on the back. Uh, I, I, I said ruin and I'm like, oh, that has a negative context to it. I was going to like ruin your schedule because you've been reading it so much. There you well, go. It's, uh, you know, I think the story I'm going for is sort of, it does have like a dark edge to it is that this world has, because the humans and, and, and spirits have become super separated, there are these monsters that basically go around and eat anything with a soul now they're like the end of the world is kind of on on the horizon right so they're living in this time of ruin and they're you know it's not <gasps> just like physical ruin but like moral ruin and things like that it's it's it is sort of a i don't know it's, it's a bit of like a dark story in that way so that's why i was going for the, the name ruin because it both has like this idea of like ancient times like ancient ruins but also ruin in an, in another sense so when you're setting up this story, you've um, um, you've had this story in mind since high school, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're first crafting a story, do you usually focus on the characters or the plot first? You know, I mean, when you're starting out and like, you know, you really like to make OCs and stuff. Like, of course, you think about like, mine this. has one devil wing and one angel wing, yeah. and their <laughs> eyes change color depending on their mood. Yeah, so it, it, Whoa, it, deep. I think when you're young, at least starting out with a story, it's always about like the character and oh, I need a really cool character. I'm gonna build a story around them. But honestly, where my story is now, uh, about the only thing that's the same as when I was a kid is the character's name is Mark, and he has black hair, and he Whoa. talks to ghost and that was about it that was the like basis. that was the basis of the story a long time ago <laughs> and just I'm from already all my sold. inspiration yeah <laughs> nice. from all the inspiration throughout the years like i started to build the story out more and now i was building this world and i was like well what's the world like and then i started thinking like the characters exist in it and the whole process of writing the story has been way way too long <laughs> of course <laughs> 
until I actually get something out to where now I'm like, okay, now this is going to be a three book series. Each book's going to have 10 chapters and that's going to take me 30 years or something, you know? Like, it's like, <laughs> that's that a actually... good estimate, 30 years. Yeah, it's, I, I, I'm passionate about it though. You know, if, if something's been burning with me for the past I can 10 tell, years. Man, it's just by the way you're talking about it. Yeah. Mm, it's I, like, you're, you're like, oh, I didn't even have an elevator pitch, but just the way you're, the passion that kind of reflects in your voice and it seems like you have it all laid out it seems like you have a solid foundation dude yeah i have everything from like when mark is he starts out in the story around like 13 and i think we end the story around when he's like 18 or 20 ish that's range. another thing i really like about your comic i told you this before but your characters actually age yeah it's got that yeah. harry potter sort of like yeah, it's grows sort of with that, you that harry potter look to it and I just want them to go through really serious things because I remember my my initial, I guess, thematic pitch for the story was like, can you hold on to yourself and your childhood in a world that's basically against preserving those things, right? Like a world that wants you, wants you to grow up and wants you to be mature, whatever that means. And in, in like a, a world where things are really dark and, you know, people are kind of fighting each other, can you still find the goodness in people? And so that's what Mark is to me, is he's a kind of reflection of what we're in in some ways today, maybe less extreme in some places and more extreme in others, but he's he's the symbol of trying to hold on to your humanity and being kind to other people when everyone's just being really pissy to each other, I guess is well, the way. Well, how is that perspective that you've had? Because high school, I, I don't want to make you seem too old, but high school was a while ago for you, right? Yeah. And I mean, uh, it's... so how has your perspective on just people in general and these characters changed? You know, I think uh, originally I wanted Mark to be this character who uh, could just like be happy around a bunch of people who are, you know, having trouble getting through life or having trouble being uh, kind when everyone's so shitty. <laughs> and uh in, in in the world where like you know one of the characters i have you know spoiler for way later one of the characters i have like her husband was killed and she's kind of like lived this life of trying to get revenge for him and like just like what that revenge does to a person i wasn't really able to understand that until i was more mature and i was older like what that would be like to fight so you've for taken someone. revenge on your enemies <laughs> no just <laughs> <laughs> but, like just, like what the heartache would be you know like living that long like having a loved one and like trying to imagine a world without them i wouldn't be able to write that as a teenager yeah that's a big thing about um storytelling is like i feel like there's so much pressure put on us especially like the internet like now you have like people who are still in high school have like i don't know like seventy thousand instagram followers or whatever we like young people feel like they need to put out their like magnum opus before they turn like 25 or something yeah no we were just discussing that yeah. citizen kane which many people describe to be the greatest film of all time was produced written and directed mm. and starring a, a guy who was just 25 but once you make the greatest film of all time where do you go from there well yeah. the pro the thing is i mean i think that you i mean that's like a special case but i think in most cases uh you need to be a little older and like have those life experiences to even tell like a deeper story oh, you know absolutely. like that's such an excellent point yeah like you like there's so many things like uh for centralia you know um the story that it is today really started kind of coming together maybe like 2014 2015 um but it had been kind of like a loose collection of ideas and stories that kept changing before then but like when I was younger, a lot of the story ideas I came up with were, like, the themes were things that maybe I just didn't have enough life experience with and mostly based them off of other things I had seen or read or stuff like that. So it just felt a little more shallow. But, like, yeah, as you get older and have more life experiences, I think you have a better insight into, like, how do you write a character and a world and a story that feels like it has a little more to say, you know? Yeah, that's such a good point. Like, there is so much pressure to, like, achieve so many big things before you're in your 30s. But mm -hmm. how can you expect to do that, like, with that small amount of time? Um, but as long as you keep creating things, like, and having those life experiences, you can build up to something. Like, I know so many writers who say that, like, oh, they didn't 
like write their first big book until they were 40 and like there's there shouldn't be so much pressure to like be yeah, so many life things expectancy like, is at like this age something yeah <laughs> so, so you got time it's, we have so much time it is too early to be worrying about like who we're gonna be that uh that also applies to like people who are like i need to get married before 30 nope you don't <laughs> no you don't have to I mean, yeah i got stuff to 20. do yeah. <laughs> I got brunches to have. I would say it's fine if you do get like you find the person that you want to be with and, and you get married that age and you're happy together. That's great too. But like I think sometimes you just have to know yourself to just to, to be who you want to be. Whether if it's like as a writer, just as a person, you need those experiences. And some people do have more experiences in their life mm -hmm. earlier on than other people do. And other and there's some people who grew up in like a small town like I did. And it's like you don't have a full rounded view of everyone until you've been out and actually yeah right seen people right i'm just saying don't make it feel like an obligation that you have yeah. to yeah you have to have this checklist of things mm -hmm. to do before you're 40 or whatever mm -hmm. turns out there are very few obligations in life <laughs> <laughs> that they're just kind of made up <laughs> yeah you have to be born and you have to die that's what everyone has to do <laughs> those in are the life. only two rules <laughs> and I think that, you know, that's something that I think it's easy for a lot of artists to forget that um, it is important to go out and have experiences and like have a life because it's so easy for us to get so honed in on like making the thing that we forget to like leave our house and actually like experience the world around us. And when you for sure and yeah. without that, it's like, how can you tell a like really resonating story about like the world and people, if you don't actually have any kind of personal connection with the world and people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's characters in both Michelle's story and my story where we like look at them when we're writing and we think about like someone that we know or mm. an experience that we've had mm. and we put that into the character that we're writing. So if you don't go out and have those experiences, you can't really write a, a realistic, believable character or story. Yeah. You know, we, we, if you can't like look at your character and you're like, well, what would they do in XYZ situation? Maybe you should think about those things and think about like, well, do I even know what that's really like? Should I go out and experience it? Mm -hmm. It reminds me of a Robin Williams monologue from Goodwill Hunting. Mm. He's like, I bet you can. I'm gonna butcher this monologue so bad. <laughs> just edit it back in where you read it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna put Robin Williams' voice here. No, he, he just basically says like, hey, I you can quote Shakespeare to me, but I bet you can not tell me what it feels like to wake up next to someone who you've known for 10 years mm -hmm. and realize that you're truly comfortable and in love with them. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was, and al also that scene is super well shot. It's because a good movie. It's, it's a great movie. And it just focuses on Robin Williams' face for like a solid three minutes. It's like he's talking to you. Talking. Yeah. You're just kind of sitting in your seat like, ooh. <laughs> ooh, Robin, you don't have to say that. Ooh. You make, you're calling me out, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, just go experience some things, guys. For sure. It'll help you if you're a writer or you, any kind of writer. Experience is definitely what builds up a, a nice story. Mm. It makes you, makes you relatable. Mm. I know when people buy Michelle's comic, that's one of the things they like so much is that the characters are relatable. And I always say that if uh, if you're writing a story, the main thing that you should be able to connect with people with is the character. Like more than mm -hmm. like genre or like does it have cool spaceships or something is like, can I see myself like being friends with this character? Or like can I see myself understanding this character? Mm -hmm. That's that's what's going to sell your story. And it's also what's going to make it have longevity and, and last a long time. Yeah, for sure. Oh my God. I, I like this topic. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not conventions anymore. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. Well, we were talking about story and foundation. That was also one of our topics. Yeah. And because I, I know a lot of people who are like, I got this really cool plot in mind. Oh, my God. And so does everyone. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. Well, we do live in L.A. Where everyone's <laughs> like, oh, I God. got the best idea. It's going to blow your world. Here's my business card. I just need... Seven thousand dollars in funds. <laughs> Pretty much. Donate it's, to my Kickstarter. It's oh Jaws my meets a bug's life. Like Oh yeah, my god. It's blank meets blank. Can, yeah, can we yeah, can we talk about that? People who just like shove things together and are like, it's just like that. It's like this cool thing and this cool thing. I read Save the Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Save the cat, by the way, for our um unorthodox listener. Wait, no. What? <laughs> Not unorthodox listeners. <laughs> what am I, like, un-LA listeners. Sure. Our un-LA listeners, it's this script writing book 
that everyone in LA reads. I read it. It's got some good parts in it, but if you're trying to like base your entire script writing off of it, you got a ways to go. It's not an instruction book. Yeah. But he basically said somewhere like, be able to say it's blank meets blank. And I was like, no, no, please don't do that. (laughs) What are some of your favorite like stories and why? I'm just curious. Oh God. Um, that's a a deep question. Um, some of my favorite stories, um, just thinking of the ones that I've read recently, um, they make you feel things like they make you just like question the world around you and like what it means to be who you are as a human being. And sometimes they get a little meta and sometimes they get a little creepy. This is a very vague answer. I'm just thinking of things that I've read recently that I absolutely love. What are you, love. a politician? Dancing <laughs> around the answer? <laughs> I'm not dancing around it. I'm just... I'm jogging uh, around it. I'm like hula hooping around <laughs> you're it. Brisk, you're brisk walking around. You're power walking around <laughs> Power walking. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, char- characterization is a really important part of the story because if you don't understand the people who are driving the narrative, then like, mm-hmm. who do you have to root for and who do you have to feel things for in this story well who are some of your favorite characters favorite fictional characters who, who makes you feel things who makes you feel things who makes me feel things guys <laughs> 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 I, I, I have to like cycle through like the rolodex of like books i've read recently all right all right well i know you like nightcrawler uh we can talk about nightcrawler what why do you like night nightcrawler for those who don't know is a x-men member Mm. Um, he he's the is, ugly one. <laughs> he's not the, really. He's Ouch. the most handsome X Men. He is the best part of X Men too. Nightcrawler is a fantastic character. I love Nightcrawler because um, I love Nightcrawler too. Yeah, like in it, like from like in his inception, like when he was first created, like like obviously now there are like a zillion mutants who like all look so different. But at the time that Nightcrawler was around, he was one of the most different looking mutants. Like mutants always looked pretty human, but he was the one that looked most like, he looks like a demon, right? (laughs) Um, But he doesn't let that affect how he feels about himself. Like he has this quote where he's like, "Um, I learned very early on that I must accept who I am or go mad. And though I am now occasionally crazy, I'm not insane. So he's like, I have to accept myself. Like this is who I am. Mm. If I don't accept this, like, identity like i'm gonna go crazy um Mm -hmm. so he he has the most like charismatic personality he's like a big jokester he's like he he usually gets like the swashbuckling archetype like attached to him um and what's interesting about him is he's also like a devout catholic so he's the most like demonic looking (laughs) mutant but he's like super religious so he's just a very fascinating well-rounded character who just embraces being alive as the mutant nightcrawler and doesn't give a fuck what others think about him and it's so amazing is that what you learned from nightcrawler that Not give uh, any fucks yeah hell yeah that's that's a great no that's a great lesson yeah yeah um because i i tend to give too much hex what people think about oh me. i give <laughs> i give all the hex so <laughs> like I'm, I'm trying but nightcrawler nightcrawler's a good dude and also now in comics he has a beard and it's great it's a very nice what? beer. <laughs> I haven't seen that. Are, are you one of those people who, uh, one of one of those female types that likes the beard? <laughs> Is that a type? <laughs> it, I, I, I don't know. I find, like, more women nowadays are like, ooh, that guy has a beard. Nah, I don't want any hair on my guys. <laughs> I want to be smooth as a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's it's totally frozen. I can't hear you guys at all. Oh, yeah. Michelle just said she wanted someone smooth as a dolphin. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Kat, obviously, if if you guys got hair growing out of your uh, uh, back of your neck, call up Kat. (laughs) That's not where beards go, Cage. Oh, beards are the opposite direction. They're on the face. Otherwise a mullet. (laughs) Kat, are you still with us? I'm, I'm with you. (laughs) <laughs> she's just thinking about Inspirate. a reverse neck beard she's just it like, infuriated it like she... cut off at Gage saying are you one of those female types and then when it came back it was like, <laughs> <laughs> are you one of them those are uh, female types are you one, one of those ones with a vagina <laughs> is that the one that I'm thinking of <laughs> so we were talking about characters and stories <laughs> please cut to this part <laughs> we can we absolutely can 
yeah, we're just talking about characters that drive stories. Matt, do you have any favorite characters? Favorite characters? You know, I really liked Hellboy for a, a sort of similar reason in that, like, he looks very ridiculous in, like, human world, but he just doesn't let that stop him from being a, a good person. And, like, all the people who shit on him and say he's, like, a freak, that doesn't stop him from being a hero, which I really liked about him. Yeah. You know, uh, he has, like, this whole occult thing going on, but at the same time, he likes to watch cartoons and raise his cats. <laughs> like, he's, he's this, like, monstrous, like, demon creature, but he's also just, like, Joe Everyman at the end of the day. And I think it's a really cool balance between those two things for his character. I think it's just like thinking about Nightcrawler when you think about Hellboy because they're kind of similar in that way. <laughs> I, I like this running theme of um, how the outside doesn't perceive you, who you are. Uh, don't judge a book by its cover and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Michelle? Any uh, characters you want to bring to the table? I'm a plug. It's sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Matt already knows what characters I like. Matt, what characters do Michelle like? Do you want to talk about like Nier Automata? Yeah, talk about Nier Automata. Two V and Nine S. No, but if I say anything about their characters, it pretty much spoils the entire game for everyone. So, so. if you haven't played the game and you want to skip ahead like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe should I just say, like, skip ahead if you haven't played Nier Automata? Uh, yeah. yeah, well, you could just... Yeah, we'll, we'll try to keep it vague, but... Um, um, skip ahead, like, five minutes or something. Sure, yeah, because Nier Automata spoilers. But um, that's, like, the first uh, game or story in a long time that I felt, like, extremely drawn to because uh, I think that the two main characters of 2B and 9S, like, they're they're kind of more strong like as a unit than as like individual characters because um it's kind of about like how um these two characters who are kind of like star-crossed in love um how uh to be like has to um kill 9s over and over because he constantly like breaks these rules of the kind of organization they're a part of um and Near is just like I think it's a really fascinating exploration of these two characters and kind of like their psyches of uh, how they deal with um, their emotions towards one another. Um, I guess what's most interesting about it is because like everyone in the game is an android, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of removes that element of like we're humans. Of course we fall in love. It's a given. You know, we all want to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, when it's, like, androids, and they're not used to, like, feelings of love and such, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of, like, this interesting exploration of, like, uh, well, what does it mean to really, like, love someone and care about them, you know? Um, I think it's a really interesting study, too, of, like, mental health. Uh, and maybe that's why I was really drawn to these two characters. Because, for instance, like, Tubi, uh, she is very uh, stone cold and stoic throughout the majority of the game, but that's because she has so much like inner trauma from having to kill like the person she loves over and over and over. And every time he comes back kind of like blank slate and doesn't remember her. And her response to that is like to emotionally shut down completely. Um, and like, for me, I could kind of relate because when things get really hard for me, I kind of respond just by like becoming like, you know, just emotionally shut down, like just the facts kind of person, you know? So I thought that was a really interesting thing of her character. That is really interesting because, because, <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know. It, <laughs> Is it funny that the first thing that comes to mind was Adam Sandler's Fifty First Dates? It's a lot like that, actually. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> it, I'm not even kidding. It's like that a lot. Both of those, the movie and the game, both explore this idea of like one person is deeply in love with the other one, and the other person forgets them every single day. But right? they're kind of doomed to always fall in love over and over yeah, again. And it's like they're trying to break this pattern, and like what that means, and like it, it's it's an interesting play on like exploration of like what love can mean in different ways right and like what it it's not just like two people who are always happy together sometimes it's like you know having strong feelings for someone who doesn't always remember 
Yeah. But it doesn't always like feel the same, I guess. And yeah. How that can hurt. It's very interesting. Yeah. I always recommend people to check it out because I honestly can't describe it to do it justice. Yeah, in the game, it definitely doesn't feel like that at first. You have to play through it and see it from different angles to kind of put get the whole picture. Together. And then once you do, you're like, wow, like I didn't know all this stuff was going on. Yeah. In the I think that's kind of how people are too. Is that like a lot of times people can be acting really strange, especially when they're really stressed out or depressed or something. And you're like, you don't get it at on? first. You don't get it, and then like once you find out about someone, you're like, oh shit, I'm. I feel bad now that like I judge this character because like exactly for example like 2B it was like okay like she's just sort of like a stone cold like every character in a game where you just kind of run around and, and right. fight things and, like but there's a reason cool. behind it yes. like, and when there's like a reason behind why a character would be that way you suddenly you're like oh my god you're like, a lot more sympathetic <laughs> yeah yes. you're more sympathetic and actually kind of feel bad if you like judge someone based on just like that aspect of them mm-hmm and that's good storytelling. <laughs> that's good storytelling. Da -dum Taking a stereotype that you know and putting it on its head. Yes. Yeah. Kat, you doing all right over there? Yeah, hanging in there. <laughs> Do you want to talk about conventions anymore or more story stuff? Because I have things to say for both. I, also <laughs> I have, have something to say. To say. No, it's interesting to hear you guys uh, chat about this sort of stuff. But we should we should get to our final topic. Yeah. Let's do it. Do you have a cool like musical interluder for your final topic? Yeah, I can, like, I can <laughs> put something in here like <laughs> final <laughs> topic. It's just air horn. Final, 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 final topic. topic. I hate it. And it's like really loud, so like it blows out your listeners' earphones <laughs> and shit. That's great. Yeah, that's great. That's let's quality. Let's have something blow. Let's. Here's the blowout thing right now. <laughs> final topic. Please edit that out. Yeah, we're gonna edit that out for that sure. Really, I can see on your computer, that's very loud. <laughs> oh God, oh jeez. So something I always like to talk about with um, with friends, especially here in the city, is like social media interactions because I met both these guys online. That's right. That's right. We, we also met, met online. Twitter. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle and you guys I both met online. Met Dude, yes. we've told you this story. Oh, well, okay, well, just like tell it for Cat. Oh my god! Are yeah, you I, want, I want to hear. I love and stories. like all your listeners. We have to tell it for them. So, oh yeah, yeah, whatever the listeners do. Yeah. <laughs> oh so yeah, those Michelle guys. And I, Michelle's from the Bay Area, California. I'm from Alabama, and uh, we met online when we were like 13. 13, 12 years old, something like that. Yeah. Uh, back before the days of like much social media, it was just like AIM and things like that. And AOL. AOL. And. Uh, we met as like artists who drew Sonic fan f fan characters. That's what Not you did when you sexually. Were <laughs> you were thirteen. You thought like you cool character. So stop it. And uh, yeah, we met on a Sonic the Hedgehog fan art forum. That's yes. amazing. What a uh, beautiful story. I love Matt, that. Matt introduced himself on like the uh, you know like the the newcomers of uh, what board or yeah, whatever. Anyone who's been on a message board knows there's like an introductions board mm -hmm. and, and i was like i don't know how to use a italics or something and i was like <laughs> welcome asterisk give you a big cookie asterisk because i was <laughs> oh 12 and then yes he im'd me trying to ask me how to make like italics in the forums or something <laughs> yeah and uh well, how do you do italics it's, it's a bracket i bracket, bracket i bracket yeah with like oh, a slash okay. Uh, I wasn't around during the AOL days. I was, yeah, I was old. still trying. I was still trying to figure out uh, Paint on Microsoft. <laughs> you figured it out we, yet, Gage? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I learned so much coding from like making guilds on Neopets. Oh my god, so, yeah. Neopets. Neopets page, yeah. My Neopets are so hungry so, right yeah, now. <laughs> we uh, were friends forever throughout high school. Just like chatted online here and there, fell off, chatted again, and then mm -hmm. by the time I graduated high school, I was like, wow, I've known this girl for. Like more, more than I've known most of my other friends, I should like you know I always went to San Francisco. I should go out and see her. So I flew out in 2009 December, and we fell in love. And I moved out here like a few months later. Uh, I've been here ever since. <laughs> I love it. That was beautiful. Uh, yeah, and we've been. He's been out here uh, eight years now. So yeah. Or, or do you like it, Matt? Yeah. I no. Love it. I, I don't <laughs> it's just like <laughs> the truth I comes out. Everyone here. Want to hear. We're breaking I don't bro. I don't love LA, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> I have accepted LA for what it is. It's like a drunk uncle. You just kind of take the good with the bad. LA Los Angeles is the drunk uncle at Thanksgiving. 
Sometimes it says something incredibly racist. And you just got to go with it because it's family. That would be back home. <laughs> yeah, right. That's more like Alabama. I, I'm, I'm kidding to any family who hears that. Oh, that's fine. But uh, yeah, social media, I don't do as much as I used to, believe it or not. Like I was on social really? media a lot more when I was younger. And now hmm. I'm like, I struggle to like say, what's a Twitter and how do I connect to people? What's a Twitter? <laughs> what's a Twitter? I, I rarely use Twitter myself. I, I used to feel obligated to like tweet once a day. Yeah. Um, but now I'm just like, ah, if people like me enough to follow me, they'll continue to follow me whether I tweet or not. You know, I used to use Twitter like a lot. And um, hi to any of my Twitter followers who are listening to this because I linked it or something. <laughs> but like, I find myself using it less and less because of all the social media platforms I visit, I find that everyone on Twitter is angry all the time. And it just kind of like has started to bum me out. Like there is a level of like, of course, staying aware of the things that are wrong in our society. And mm -hmm. then there's like trying to constantly be in a bad mood. There's yeah. And I don't want to talk too much about like today's society, but it feels like everyone is trying to push you to do the quote unquote right thing or right. whatever they think is right. Well, it, it just kind of feels like if you're not um, yelling angrily about something all the time, then you're not paying attention. But I think that it's okay once in a while to just kind of like talk about like dumb shit just for your own sanity. Um, <laughs> and for my sanity, I kind of had to like disconnect a bit from Twitter because it was just such a barrage of like terrible, horrible things that I was like, uh, I need to like control the amount of misery that comes into my day <laughs> every day or I'm just gonna like be a puddle of sad. <laughs> What was that cat you were gonna say something? Oh, um, yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna, you know, agree that Twitter is pretty exhausting. Um, mm -hmm. I scroll through it all day long, and it's always just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of things that, like, you know, I think back in the days before social media, and, like, there was, like, a lot of, like, blissful ignorance. It's like you didn't know the things mm. that were going around in the world, and that's, like, now you're constantly exposed to it. So it's, like, yeah, it's, it's, great to be aware of everything and it's great to see people having conversations about it and getting to participate in those conversations and getting to like educate yourself on things um i think social media works best when you use it the way you want to and don't feel mm. obligated to have a take on everything i that... know some people who have to have a take on everything and it's like you don't yes. have to and sometimes it's like sometimes you gotta like step back and like stay in your own lane and like let people like let other pe people's voices be heard over yours so i Some, absolutely yeah so i like i um i used to use social media more and i'm trying to use it more now than i do currently because um like we were saying earlier um networking especially in the comics community like the comic community on social media is so like huge and welcoming so it's mm -hmm. it's really exciting to be a part of that um and that's how i feel about social media i think it's a great tool to Educate yourself and be aware of the world and also like just broaden your horizons and like meet new people and just like expand in your career. The end. <laughs> follow Kat's uh, Twitter at Kat Vendetti. Yeah, follow me. I want to have Twitter friends. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. I'll I like, follow uh, you. I like Yay. Kat's Twitter because it's always like slipped on an ice cube today and uh, my cat is ate cheese off my hair. My last That's the kind tweet. Of was a My Hero Academia meme that I'm proud of. I thought it was funny. <laughs> okay, follow her for me. <laughs> Put that meme on Excuse the fridge. Excuse me. For the two times a week that I'm on Twitter, I will check you out. <laughs> I'm going to follow I, 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 I do all Instagram of you right now. These days. Mm. Like, I find that, I don't know, maybe it's just because, yeah, you get a little exhausted from, like, political posts a lot, and, and like, you just kind of want to see art sometimes. I think Instagram's pretty good for that because you have to have, like, an image with every post, so... At least, like, I follow my artist friends on there, my cosplay friends on there. I can see what they're making at the time. But also, I can share my artwork. And and just kind of, like, it's, it's like an artist community on Instagram that is very encouraging. And it's a good way to, like, talk to artists that you really appreciate. And you can see, like, what they're working on and all that kind of stuff. So it's a nice way to share everything on there. The thing I have trouble with Instagram is, like, trying to keep my... 
I guess like my, my world's separate and my, mm. my Instagram is very blended where it has cosplay mm -hmm. and then it has like my life stuff and it also has my artwork. And I have artist friends who they basically just have one Instagram for their art and all that's all that you see when you go there. It's like almost like a deviant art page. Like that's that's their artwork. And they have a different one for their life and like a, or a different one for cosplay. And I just kind of blend it all together because it's it's a better picture of who I am as a whole, I think. I agree. Yeah, and that's but, the interesting yeah. thing about um, using social media today, like as an artist, is that um, I think it's better to have a little bit of mixing, like instead of just posting only art and nothing else, like on your social media, because people these days they don't want to just follow cool art; they want to follow like cool people, you know. And people yeah. want to know who is the person behind the art, so. I, I like to, you know, show a little bit of like, well, this is who I am like as a person. Like, yeah, I like to do uh, cosplay and I love uh, fashion and, you know, crafts and video games too, you know, because that is the whole picture of who I am. Um, you know, short of like, you know, I don't think you should use your art blog to also post like big rants about your day. Like, you know, that's <laughs> like, that's Facebook, I think. Oh my, yeah, Facebook is an entirely different beast. That's I a different feel like beast all of the people from our generation has abandoned Facebook and it's yeah, just like right. old crusty people nowadays. <laughs> seem like... Every now and then. It's for throwing parties. I have too many oh friends God, who are yeah. still there and that's the only place I can see them. Yeah. It's Facebook. So I'm like, mm. how are they doing? Are they still there? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, it's, it's good to uh, just like let people see a bit more of like who you are um, on, on social media. So like, don't be shy to post the occasional picture of, you doing something fun and, and mundane on yeah. your art account. <laughs> you know, like I'll post my cosplay, my best genius or something, and that gets like 200 likes on Instagram. My art gets like 20 or 25. You're a good <laughs> best genius, there's though. Like, there's a pretty good crossover of people I've noticed who have followed me because they like my cosplay, but then they also like my art posts. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I appreciate that. And I like I appreciate people who will go through and, and actually like more than just what they followed you for. I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's pretty... Like um, I posted recently on it, I'm very selective with pictures I post on Instagram because I feel like they have to be kind of unique mm -hmm. in all those. But that um, brunch pic I took this morning was quite unique. <laughs> feel free to use that one. Yeah, we we did have a send me that photo. Um, I will. Yeah, but post it alongside this episode, please. Oh, okay. And um, <laughs> we really emphasize the brush brunch stereotype by using like. <laughs> Basic bitch cursive, uh, BFFs, Sunday fun day. Using we are hashtags. smiling so hard, it looks like we're going to crack our teeth. <laughs> it's like the most disingenuous smiles you've ever seen. Uh, but I, that's, what was I saying? Oh yeah, like people I've met on the internet were wishing me like happy birthday. And I'm like, that's it's such a weird thing because like people come out of the woodwork mm -hmm. and, just to wish you a happy birthday. That's sweet. Or, yeah. Yeah, it's a very sweet thing. Like, yeah. people who I've never met in real life are mm -hmm. like, Gage, I haven't seen you in a while, but happy birthday. <laughs> I mean, I've even had people do, like, I've had readers do, like, uh, fan art for, like, my birthday, and I'm like, my heart just wants to explode with I, love for I them. I have fan art, cool. too. Right. Someone, s people, like, fan art me for st stupid podcast stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't do anything, but thank you so much. <laughs> Sweet. Fans really, I mean, honest to yeah, God. I love you guys. <laughs> I mean, For fans sure. are really what keep creators going. Because as much as I, I'd like to say I would keep posting my work out there, even if no one recognized it at all, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think anyone would, it, honestly, at the end of the day. like, um, So if you like something, I think it is important to reach out to those people on social media um, and just kind of, you know, say like, hey, thanks. Like, I like what you're doing, you know, because that can really motivate a creator to that keep going. That makes people's day. Someone it does. tweeted at me. Uh, they're like, hey, you're such a humble host. And I'm like, you are. Oh, you're a great host. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I appreciate people going out of their way on mm -hmm. social media to tell me that doing a good job yeah because it's like it takes like what 30 seconds of your day but you could seriously just like make that person's whole day <laughs> just with like a simple little thing it's great and those are the good stories of social media so we <laughs> well, we're yeah. focusing on the bright side of social well, media but see people don't focus on that enough i think i don't think so either people are like oh you won't believe what rant my uncle posted the other day <laughs> no family on facebook yeah, that's just, just my just, rule. that's my advice to everyone this week. Delete your entire family on Facebook. 
<laughs> Delete your entire family. Delete your entire family from exi- no, 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 stop, no, no. Stop, what? Don't. Bad advice. Bad advice from the gauge tour yet again. I mean, honestly, uh, when occasionally I've had someone try and like, you know, shit on me, I don't really care because the support that I've gotten from readers like outweighs the random person having a bad day that is just like, whatever. <laughs> Kat, are you still there? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I feel like you're cutting out every now and then. Mm. I am, yeah. It's It's been freezing up a little bit, but it comes back, so I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Kat. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah. I yeah, I, th I think people need to focus on the good a lot more than the bad. And uh, I, I'm trying to be a little more active on social media mm. as far as, like, almost adults goes mm. and... Video. Oh, by the way, I released a new video. Gauge your interest on cameos. Check it out if you haven't. Yay! Um, but, yep. Yeah, I, I, I would just go out of your way to say appreciate you to someone. Uh, oh, that actually uh, leads into our challenge. Um, I, I don't know if you listen to the podcast lately, but we uh, do this new thing where you challenge us to do... You give us a little challenge and we talk about it on the next podcast. I give you a challenge? Yeah, you guys. I, I knew that, and I sort of didn't prepare a challenge. <laughs> um, so yeah, whatever we talked about today, um, issue us something that we can do, Kat and I can do together. I'm so excited. The listener at home. So just like any topic? Any well, topic. Anything we talked about today. Anything we talked about today. Oh, today? Yes. So like expand on it? Just give him like a challenge for the next week. Yeah, like something that we can do in the real world. Oh, related to what we talked about today. Related to I mean, I think the, the easiest one would be to go out and thank your favorite creators. Yeah, thank your favorite creators. Uh, we could do that. Not like Twitter. God, but like artists. <laughs> <laughs> I do that too, if, if you're into that. If you're into that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks, Jesus. I love your work. Love your work. <laughs> Huge fan of the human race over here. Okay, I think I have a challenge. Sure. Kind of in, in the in those in the light of you know talking about conventions and stories and things like that and like all these characters, is I would challenge you to like go back and look at something from your childhood that you thought was like too childish or something and try and see it in like a new light and, mm -hmm. and respect that someone who wrote that was in an adult and like try and see that like character that you love from like a new perspective. Ooh, that's an interesting challenge. I like that. That is cool. You know what, what I thought you were going with, can I say? Is it a bad joke? No, it's not a joke. It's serious. Okay. I thought um, another thing I thought of was like, go back to something maybe you gave up as a kid because you thought it was childish, like, or you weren't good at it. Like maybe you tried to play like an instrument or something as a kid and you like, gave up because you felt like you weren't good enough. Like maybe think about revisiting it because i think like when we're kids turning into adults we give up on so many creative endeavors thinking mm -hmm. that it's childish you know but then it makes for a really boring adult because you don't have any hobbies <laughs> so. you can yeah. you these can are tell the... great challenges <laughs> you can tell the people... i look forward to hearing you guys do it mm. oh thank you and i'm gonna but, do all yeah. three of those oh damn <laughs> oh, shit. i'm gonna start Three's playing my bagpipes oh. again just you guys wait Oh All shit! Right. Yes, <laughs> All Bagpipe episode next week. Can uh, so next next podcast you'll talk like normal, but Cat can only respond in bagpipe. <laughs> You're like, what do you think of that, Cat? <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll get practicing. Good, good, good. All right, I think we're gonna go over to final thoughts. Cat, you've been a bit quiet this podcast, so why don't you do final thoughts first? All right, well, my thoughts were quiet because my computer was frozen for maybe 30% of this episode. Oh, you guys won't no, know that. Is. With uh, some editing magic, it'll sound crystal clear and flawless. Um, my final thoughts are, hmm, let's see. We talked about conventions. I think conventions are an amazing environment for fans of all variety of people to come and share their love of geek culture and it's very exciting it's very cool to go and network and meet people who are like you or maybe not like you and just broaden your horizons uh social media is very great for those same reasons you can network you can meet people in your community and you can help each other grow and be better people it's an exciting world i love it all right <laughs> i like it i like it i like it final thoughts michelle uh so in 
regards to conventions, I think that um, I think they're really great spaces for people to just kind of like cut loose of worrying about like what other people think of their nerdiness and just really indulge in it and yeah I've, I've met so many cool people and friends by going to conventions so honestly in like recent years there's like conventions little ones popping up all over the country so if you haven't gotten to experience one yet I highly recommend it um, we talked about characters a bit and I think that a really good character is one that can make you kind of see the world in like a new perspective that maybe you otherwise wouldn't have thought deeply about. And uh, regarding social media, I think that it's very important to not shy away from the, um, you know, the problems that we as a society are facing. And you should open your eyes and ears to um, the perspectives of, especially like marginalized people in our community. Just remember that it is okay to step away from the torrent of bad news and negativity in the world. And, you know, instead of feeling a need to always uh, be angry about what's wrong in the world, take some of that energy and put some some positivity out there yeah. with, that, with that outrage. Use it for good. Yeah, yeah. Use, it. use it for good, not evil. <laughs> That's my thoughts. <laughs> Matt, final thoughts? My final thoughts are in in the respect of, you know, storytelling or, you know, conventions or doing cosplay or anything. Just don't be afraid to be your full self. You know, if you are a nerd and you want to go out and and show off your love for a favorite character or favorite creator or something and, and put on some cosplay, it's not, even if it seems silly, it's not silly. It's an expression of who you are as a whole. And, and the same goes for like stories and storytelling. I can tell you from writing on my story and helping Michelle with hers is that when you're sitting there and, and thinking of these characters that don't exist, <laughs> it can all feel really silly, really childish. But these things that you think are childish, people have been doing them for, you know, ever since humans could tell stories. So I don't think that you should limit yourself into like feeling like an adult or almost an adult just to, uh, you know, cut yourself free from those things. You should uh, enjoy yourself as, as a whole being, and that includes sometimes being silly and dressing up as a cartoon character, <laughs> uh, and, and writing your own characters and thinking what they would be like. Even when you're 30 or 40, 50 years old, you're still you're still yourself. You don't have to feel like you're being childish. Yeah, I I love that. I I feel like I have nothing to contribute to the. the <laughs> well, I'm sure you have a final thought. Here. Sure. Yeah, my final thought is, um, hey, if you're not 100% active on social media all the time, that's okay. If you're not 100% comfortable with dressing up as an anime character, <laughs> that's okay. If you feel 100% comfortable as an anime character, be an anime character. <laughs> <laughs> Just dive right into the animes, guys. And so, yeah, I think with that, that concludes the podcast. Um, if everyone likes you, where can you guys be followed? Uh, I can be followed. I'm Michelle Draws on Twitter. That's... Uh... M I C H E L L E draws with a Z because the S was taken. They're not even <laughs> using their account. It's like, oh, motherfuckers. Come the fuck on. The Z is um, way cooler. I know. It makes me seem like a cool 90s kid, right? <laughs> and then um, I'm Michelle Stanford Art on both uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, and then, of course, the comic, Centralia 2050, you can read it online at centralia2050.com. Um, or tapas if you like that or tapastic it's on there too it's c-e-n-t-r-a-l-i-a-2050 uh, and chapter 5 is going to be starting up around November Ooh. so it's on a break right now so it's a good time to um, read catch through up. the story yeah catch up Matt where can they find you and you can find me pretty much everywhere as Invelian because I made up a name that no one would take, so I don't have to put numbers at the end. It's E N. Whoa. <laughs> numbers are the worst. It's E N V E L I O N, and that's Instagram, Twitter, whatever, everywhere except for Steam because someone took my na name on Steam somehow. But uh, I think Instagram is the place to follow me, uh, where I'm most active. If you guys want to check me out there, and also uh, anytime that Gage posts the art for the podcast, you can find myself there. Yeah. Kat, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Kat Vendetti, K-A-T-V-E-N-D-E-T-T-I, like Vendetta, but with an I at the end, which I think is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Follow me on Twitter 
<laughs> Follow me on Twitter at Gage Agnew. Um, the podcast at Almost Adults Pod on both Instagram and Twitter. And email us at Almost Adults Podcast at gmail.com. And we're going to end it with a song. Everyone join in for the signature Gage Agnew outro Almost Adults theme. Gage is exiting the podcast now. Now we are exiting the podcast. Now that nobody can deny. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, that was loud. We're done.